Hey, good afternoon, students. I'm really happy to see you. And I definitely want to get started on unit three stuff. Um, you know, it's more multiplying fractions. Uh, but before we do, just a few things I was um, thinking about uh, as we are entering into, um, as we're entering into unit three. Um, I just wanted to point out that I'm going to hang up these posters. These are all of our advanced mastery and mastery scores for the unit one test that we took uh, a little while ago. Um, and unit one was um, all about volume and everything. And then the unit two test, well then in the middle we took a, um, we took a, a, a cumulative review quiz and I have those scores right here. But like I said, I'll put these up in the hallway. Uh, but otherwise, just really, really good job. And this one, we had a couple of hundreds and some advanced mastery and mastery. And this we took on October 1st. <laughs> and, um, and then this is from, this is from, let me just make sure I'm sharing the right thing. And I am. Okay. Um, this is from Thursday's Unit 2 test, which was also quarterly assessment number one. Just wanted to point out we had lots more hundreds and advanced masteries and so many of you hit mastery as well uh so just you know really really um awesome performance um performances and you should be really proud of yourself so think back to how you prepared uh, especially if your name is on um one of these posters and uh you know just make sure that you continue that and just always like push yourself forward but like I said, I'll put these up in the hallway, so you should be really, really proud of yourself as well. Um, okay, next, uh, I don't know if you know this or if you follow baseball at all, but uh, the Yankees are in the World Series. I'm so excited about this. And um, the Mets are potentially in the World Series because uh, I'm... Uh, filming this before, I'm going to stop sharing first, I'm filming this before you, uh, before they play that game. So I'm excited to see who wins that game. Um, it's kind of uh, last minute for them because if they don't win this game here, then uh, the Dodgers go to the World Series because the it's a seven game series and the Dodgers are up three to the uh, games one to the Mets, two games one. So really excited about the Yankees. And, um, okay, so let's get started. And let's see, <clears throat> I know there's a few Mets fans out there, Gio, Caleb, so uh, so I look forward to, to this week. I really hope that the, um, I really hope that the Mets, Mets do well. Okay, I'm gonna start off with a joke, and here we go. Okay, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Why did zero and two break up? Because someone came between them. <laughs> it's like zero, one, two. Um, anyways, two looks pretty upset. Definitely saying peace. Um, one and, and zero look pretty happy. Uh, but anyway, just, just silly. Okay. <laughs> um, you know what I'll try to do? I'll try to put a, tell you a few things that you can write on your homework so that I can keep giving you beat points. Um, those of you who uh, you know, are able to check your culture reports, you'll notice that um, once I get a full you know, spreadsheet filled up, I put in all of your signatures. So it'll say like parent signature, and some of you had like 10 or so, so you got a bunch of beat points. All right, I do wanna get started. And um, this is what we learned on Friday. We were doing um, we started unit three, which is a continuation. Unit three is multiplying and dividing fractions, so that's new. And we were talking about mm, the uh, macaroni and cheese. Okay, and basically on Friday, we drew diagrams to represent fractions of fractions. And that of, we know, is to multiply something of something else. The, um, the thing that's going to be important coming up in um, just in general is we have these numbers. These are less than one. So these are really small numbers. And um, when we multiply them, the opposite of what we're used to happening when multiplying happens. So let me just give you a small example. So your whole life, three times two is gonna equal six. So both the three and the two are smaller than the product. But 
what happens in fractions because you're taking a part of a part. So even like something's already small and you're taking something smaller, you're going to get one sixth. And one sixth is absolutely smaller than one third and one half. I'll show you. This is thirds, this is a half, and then this is sixths. One, two, three, four. Yep. So here's one sixth. This would then be a half, and this would be a third. So see how much smaller one sixth is because the whole size doesn't change. So in this case, the one sixth is. Uh, the part of the entire rectangle. So let me just go back up to this. If we're doing one third of one half, first I'm getting half, then I'm splitting the half into thirds, and I know that this is then one, two, three, four, five, six parts of the whole. Okay? Uh, so please make sure those notes are on there. I definitely look. And um, let's start the first problem. Today's work, okay, so which diagram shows the correct model? Ooh, lasagna. Some of you said that on Friday. Okay, so we want one-sixth of one-half. When it says of, I know it should start with the one-half. Oh, they all have one-half, so that's great. So then from my one-half, I want to then split it into sixth. This is into thirds, so no. This is in twelfths, so no, and then this is just a half, right, so no, and then this is one, two, three, four, five, six, this is one sixth, and that is the correct answer, okay? For number two, a pan of brownies is one half full, so immediately I'm drawing the pan of brownies, and I'm going to do horizontal, and I'm going to get half full. And then Tristan is going to eat half of the remaining brownies. I'll eat the other half, Tristan. Um, eat half of the remaining brownies in the pan. So these are gone. Everybody else ate them. And then Tristan is eating this amount. Okay? And then these are still, like, left over here. Okay? So I want to draw a diagram to represent this situation. I'm splitting it into half. Let me just show you what ends up happening because we're going to have regular fractions soon. So I'm splitting it into half, and I have that amount left. Then I'm splitting the half into half, and I'm told that Tristan eats that amount. So what ends up happening is that the overlapped section is one-fourth of the entire pan. Okay? So if Tristan eight one half of one half that is one fourth of the pan okay so this overlap is going to be really really important coming like coming forward all right okay okay so on the next page the back how many cubic inches? We're doing some review. Review questions are not optional. Some of you leave them blank. It's not, these are actual homework questions, so they're marked wrong when they're blank. Okay, how many cubic inches are in a box with a base area of 35 and a height? Okay, so it's talking about cubic inches, so I know it's three dimensions, which means I need to have a volume, length, width, height, okay? And I'm told that the base is already given to us. And the base is 35 square inches, and that's length and width. So I know that that's 35, whether one of them's 7, the other one's 5, whether it's 35 and 1, who knows. But then I'm told that the height is 8. So I'm just going to put 5 here, 7 here, and then I'm told that the height is 8. So let's see what happens when I make a three-dimensional. And this is not required. You do not have to do this. I'm just doing this right now for you to see it. Um, it's a pretty, pretty tricky thing to do. Um, I've practiced in a while. So here, if the base area, the base is just a rectangle, 
So that's length times width, and that is 35, okay? And then we have 35 times 8, which is the height. Okay, so it's like length, width, height. Okay, and now I'm going to find 35 times 8. If this multiplication is not automatic to you, add it 8 times. So 40, I'm going to drop the number to the right, bump the number to the left, 8 times 3, 8, 16, 24, 25, 26, 7, 28, 280. So my volume is 280 cubic inches. And I'm going to circle that because I kind of had a lot going on here, and I want to make sure that, you know, people see it. Okay, um, on the next one, I'm going to leave, we're going to start it, leave that one for you, and this is going to be the graded one, and then we're going to also look at number five. All right, if Carly used only two-thirds of 24 ounces, okay, how many did she use, okay? Um, so we're asked two questions. How many did she use? So solve it over here. And then answer, she used blank ounces, and blank ounces are left. So you have to answer both of those questions, okay? And we've talked about what of means, multiply. So let's see how we're doing there. Okay, number five. How many square yards is a mural that measures? Okay, so square yards means I need area. And I have 5 and 3 fourths times 7. And I like that it's in this order because I can easily see that I need 5 sets of 7 and, who's got the attitude, 3 fourths sets of 7, right? Because it's 5 and 3 fourths, so it's 5 and 3 fourths. 5 times 7, 3 fourths times 7. So I'm going to get 35, and I'm going to get 21 over 4. And this is actually one of the, the problems that we've had working on this. This has to be turned into a mixed number first. This is one of our mistakes. Okay, so I'm going to have 21 divided by 4. Drop it like it's hot. Old school. Okay, and I have one left over out of 4. So now, because this was 35 plus 21 over 4, I'm going to have 35, go back to your problem, plus 5 and 1 fourth. That I can do. 35 plus 5 is 40 and 1 fourth square yards. And I need to have my, my units. Okay? So I should see that on your paper. Okay, and then this last one, I'm going to have it graded as well because you are trying to find all expressions, okay? And I will let you know that there are three answers, okay? So there are three. All right, I will see you on uh, Tuesday morning, and um, we'll have to see who's in the World Series. I, uh, maybe the Mets are playing tonight, Monday night, who knows? All right, good night. See you very soon.